They say that those who wish to change the world are duty bound to try. My name is Dave Snugs, and I'm the founder of My Neighbor in Need and My Student in Need. So what is My Neighbor in Need? Well, it's a 24 hour a day, seven day a week wish list where anyone with a specific need in a specific area can ask for help. The need is verified and approved and posted on a website where anyone in the world can fulfill that need. And the best part is, the person in need and the person helping never meet. It's anonymous giving at its best. People ask me where the idea came from. In 2001, I was working for the city of Greensboro, North Carolina, and it was late. I was the only one there, I thought. And suddenly there's a knock at my door, and there's a fellow team member. And I'm like, what are you doing here? Well, my car won't start. Okay, well, what can I do to help? Well, I need battery cables. Do you have battery cables? I did not. So as I drove him home, I could tell he was frustrated. And all of a sudden he goes, great. Here's another need I have that I can't, I can't take care of. And I said, another need? What other needs do you have? And he went through a list of general human needs. And I said, you know, I work with you. I'm your friend. I would help. And he goes, well, how do I ask for help? It was a pride issue. People don't know how to ask for help. So I dropped him off and I said on the way home, what if there was a way that you could ask for help and no one knows you're asking? Well, this is 2001, way before Facebook. So I went home and couldn't find any way to do it. And the idea was pushed on the back burner, but it never went away. Flash forward 10 years, November 18th, 2011. My wife and I are at home watching the CBS Evening News with Scott Pelley. Here's where God comes in. We had never seen that show. We always watched Brian Williams and Be Safe. But for some reason on that day, that show was on. And during that show was a story about a guy in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, named Sal Dimicelli. For 20 years, this guy has been helping his neighbors in need with pen and paper. When the show was over, I was so inspired, I said to myself, okay, I get it. I got this idea, I know it will work, I've got to find someone who can do this. So I went out and started talking to computer programmers. And a lot of them loved the idea, but they were more interested in how much money they could make off of it. In fact, one guy I asked, can you do this? Oh, sure, I can do it. How much is it going to cost? $10,000? I work for a nonprofit. I really can't afford that. So I went away, and I got frustrated. And then I stopped and I said, you know what I need? I need a Mark Zuckerberg. I need a 20-year-old kid that knows how to write code. So I went out looking, and I ran across Tom Penwell, 28 years old, 6'5", 265 pounds, delivers Chinese food at night, <clears throat> lives in his mom's basement, doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> You're my guy. <laughs> I met Tom, and I showed him the original drawings. And I said, can you do this? He looks at it and goes, yeah, I just have the right code. OK, I'm 50. What does that mean? I have no idea what computer code was. I have to have the computer tell itself what to do. And you can do that? Sure. OK, how much is it going to cost? I'm thinking, here it comes. Oh, I don't know. How's 500 bucks? I'll tell you what. I'll give you a grand if you can make it work. OK. Two weeks later, he calls me up. And he says, it's done. And he'd never seen anything like it before. And his quote to me was, what you have is Facebook for good deeds. I launched it on March 20th. 2012, with the goal of helping 200 people a year. We're now 20 months old, and as of right now, we've helped 1,490 people in 20 months. We are now in 30 cities in two states. No financial gain, no help from the government. I actually had a government official come to me and go, what can the government do to help you? <laughs> Being Italian, I said, stay out of my way. <laughs> we can do it better, and we're doing it better every day. So what is the need? Right now, here in Cascade County, Montana, we have seven people in need. Let's see what's going on. If it's in red, it's an immediate need. What's interesting is, is that they're all generic, so you never know who's asking. You have an idea of the story, but not necessarily who they are. So for example, Husband and wife working part-time, the wife is disabled, are in need of a used, clean, queen-size bed, mattress and box springs. 
They moved from a furnished, long-time mobile um, motel down to their very first apartment, and they don't have a bed. 62% of our needs are not financial. They are for simple things. Our number one request, beds. You have not experienced the joy that we have until you deliver someone a bed who's been sleeping on the floor. <coughs> it's like you brought them the winning lottery ticket. Beds are our number one request. So let's say, for example, you go, well, you know, I've got an extra bed, and I'm not using it, and I want to donate it. You simply click the Fulfill This Need button. You give us your information. We get in contact with you. We pick up your bed. We deliver it to the neighbor in need. You've helped a total stranger, and they'll never meet you. It's that simple. Now, let's say, for example, I get my bed, and I'm happy. And then two weeks later, my washing machine breaks, and I can't afford a washing machine, or I can't afford to have a service man come and look at it. You can put a request in, and we'll get it, but it will never go live on the website until you do one thing first. You have to go to the site and fulfill the need for someone else first. It's paid forward. Once you help a neighbor in need, then you have a clean slate, and your next request goes live. Now, how we kind of control misuse is we decide what is a need and what is a want. Now, my wife will tell you that she needs Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> That's a want, not a need, honey. A uh, need is something that is going to impact your life. So what we do on our website is we list approved categories, things that we do, car repairs, housewares, gas cards, things like that. We don't do things like rent, because there's other agencies that do that. So here's the best part. Once you get this all done and it's going, it's out there for anyone to use. I mentioned we're in 30 cities and two states. Um, I own all of this, but I give it away for free. Because I'm just the guy God picked to do this. I mean, let's be real. That's simple as how it is. And because I can't verify a need in Billings, Montana, or back home in Greensboro, I give it to people that want to do this work there because they verify a need. Now, let's say you're having a really bad day. You think the world's going to heck in the handbasket? You need some inspiration? We have that too. You go right here to the Fulfill Need Archive page. There you will find all 1,440 needs, all good deeds that have been done, all laid out for you. It reminds you that people are helping people every day. Strangers are helping strangers. Now let's say your need is financial. I have a car repair, and you're approved. And the donor says, I want to take care of that. The person in need never gets a dime. You're fulfilling the need by writing the check to the repair shop. They don't get a dime. It eliminates fraud because they have nothing to gain but getting their need fulfilled. So you write the check to the insurance company or the car repair place or the gas company. But the person in need never gets a dime. So the success of this um, took off really well. And I had a request from a principal from a low-income school in Spokane, Washington. She said, I would love this. Could you do one for my students? Well, we really couldn't because we verify every need. If you put a request in, we ask you 20 questions. We verify everything. Our motto is if we can't prove it, we don't post it. Give an example. Had someone last year called, I'm in desperate need of $300 in gas. I've got to get to my uncle's funeral in Minnesota. Great. Ask the questions. Question number four, what's the name of the funeral home? Uh, I'll call you back. Never call back. That's how it works. So we had, a, we had a teacher say to us, a principal say to us, I want this for my students, how can we do it? Well, we can't call a student and verify it. There's rules. I said, we need someone who can verify it. She goes, what are the teachers? Who knows their students better than their own teachers? So the teachers become the verifiers, and they send us the request. And because of that, we created my student in need. We launched this just two months ago, and we've already helped fulfill 161 requests for students in need. And when I say we, it is all of you. I'm simply the catalyst that does this. Because in this situation, you go and you say, you know what, the student needs a backpack, you buy the backpack, and you deliver it to the school. We don't. You get the joy as the donor to be able to affect that child's life, and you'll never meet that child. We know nothing about the child. All we know is grade, age, gender in the school. There's no way to embarrass the child. The item is given by the teacher to that child in a private setting. This now is ready to go across the country. 
It's been tested, it works, and it's free of charge. Anyone can have it. Our next step is Missoula County here in Montana. They called, they want it, it's gonna be theirs. Now, one thing I'll end with, we're the only charity to my knowledge, when you give a dollar to fulfill a need, every penny is used for that. If you buy a gas card to help someone out, we don't take a percentage of that out. We don't use it for operating costs. Every penny of your donation for that gift card buys that gift card. So you're probably saying, well, how do you make this work? Great question. I mentioned earlier in my introduction that I work for Montana Farmers Union. Montana Farmers Union is a 501c3 company that uh, focuses on farming life. Well, who knows their neighbors better than a farmer? In fact, if you ask our board, I said to them, why did you get involved in this? And one of our board members said, I know when my, when my neighbor, my farmer, breaks down. When his combine breaks down, it's farmers to the rescue. They wanted to be into it. So they became our official partner. They pay all the operating costs for this program for both for two years. We have other partners in Dignity that provide us with free marketing. We write a column in the newspaper and things like that. But every dime you give goes to fulfill a need. We take nothing from that. Even our staff, our sponsor. Picture a NASCAR driver. We have companies that pay that person to do our work. I want to end by giving you a number. The number is 1,440. What that represents is the number of minutes in every day. Every day you are given 1,440 minutes to do something with. What are you gonna do with it? To help a student in need, it takes less than one minute. If not you, who? Thank you very much.